Welcome. Thank you for joining me for this seasonal wreath for Valentine's Day. The first step is going to be creating the decorations, the individual decorations that I'm going to use. We're essentially going to be creating picks or floral picks to stick into our wreath. And the first one that I'm making is just a basic love. And what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've die cut some love die cuts. And now I'm taking them and I'm just stacking them together using a very strong adhesive. I want these to be pretty strong. I want them to be hefty and weighty and I want them to be that way so that I can use them over the course of a couple of different years. I, I want to have this as an option. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just layering these on my love die and I'm making them a little bit more substantial. I will then be gluing a pin to this so that I can use it as a pick to go into my foam wreath. And if you're interested, I have the wreath that I used um, to cover in another video, and I will link to that. And by the way, all of the supplies that I use will be linked in the description, or you can find that information over on my blog. So again, all I'm doing is just loading these on and making sure that I line them up. And then I'm weighing them down with a stamping tool because it makes it really flat as it dries. So the second type of decorations that I'm going to make is a, a number of cutout hearts. And I'm just using some scrap fabric here. These are pieces of vellum and glitter paper and pattern paper. And all I'm going to do is use a Fisker's heart die and just punch a number of different hearts out of this. And again, I'm going to layer these up because I really want them to be substantial. I want them to have weight and I want them to have heft. I want them to have a little bit of dimension. And since I have a lot of extra paper, this is a great way to use some of my extra paper and create different decorations that really do hold up over the course of time. Now I'm using a pattern paper on the top and then I'm going to use the solid in the center. If I were to use a white paper in the center of this and I didn't like the white outline, I could go back in with a Copic marker or a marker and clean up the edges. So really it's up to you from a preference perspective, like what is it that you prefer, what is the look that you like. Since I'm using red paper on this and it's a red heart on the top, I'm not too worried about it. I am layering these up, three, four, five layers in some cases, so that they're very, very strong and hefty. I have two Fiskars punches that I'm going to be using in this particular project. This is a larger scalloped heart, and I have a small plain heart or smooth heart that I'm going to be used as well. And I've sped this up a little bit so that it you can see what I'm doing without having to watch me do it very slowly. And I'm still using that Ranger glue. This does take quite a bit of glue as you're going through this, so just keep that in mind. I actually, in a little while, I'm going to have to refill my glue bottle because I ended up using so much glue. And I'm using that stamp tool to just keep things down. You might notice I'm now gluing the little bottom of that. I didn't get quite close enough on that. And now what I'm going into doing is I am going to glue the little pin to the back. I chose these type of pins because it has that flat surface that will adhere to the glue. It keeps gives it more of a surface to adhere to. I like those pins for that. And these are just, in this case, these were just sewing pins that I found that I felt would work well. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a floral pin that has a pearl base or pearl head to it and I'm stacking up some different cardstocks to see how many layers I need to reach the thickness of the pin because what I'd like to do is I want this to be go straight through the center of the heart but I don't want to be able to see the pin or the outline of the pin in that. So Basically what I've done is I've just sort of measured the distance that I need or the number of layers that I need to be able to create that channel that that pin will fit in. And then I cut the hearts in half and trimmed a little bit off so that there is room for that channel. And now I'm just going in and on each side I'm gluing in the different sides to create that channel that that pin will go into. 
It doesn't matter in this case that I have paper that is solid on one side and patterned on the other. It doesn't matter as I'm gluing these center pieces in, they're not going to show. It's not going to make any difference. So you might notice I'm not really paying attention as to whether or not it's a pattern side up or the other side up or the solid side up. I'm just really lining those up so that they're as close as possible. And keep in mind, these are handmade, so they don't have to be perfect if they're a little bit offset. One of the nice things about using the glue is that you can reposition things. One of the downsides of using glue of this type is that sometimes things shift a little bit as they dry, so sometimes you just have to work with it. And I've taken this pin, it was a white pin to begin with, and I've taken a copid marker and just used that to make it a little bit more compatible with my heart. So I, I covered it with just a little bit of a blush tone of Copic marker. And now I'm putting that pin in the center channel and gluing it down using quite a bit of glue. And now I'm going to put a top on that so that that pin is now in that channel very securely. And I'm using that stamping tool this time as a base because if I put that directly on my craft mat it would not lay the way that it needs to in order for that to adhere together properly. So having that hang off the side of that stamping tool really does help to keep things lined up. Sometimes it takes a little bit for it to get exactly the way that you want it. And now I'm going to take another stamping tool, a small one, and just put it on top and give it an opportunity to dry a little bit so that I can put the final layer on, which is that pattern paper that you see. So again, it's about patience. It's about being careful as you're putting these, gluing these things together, but it's really simple. It takes really very limited supplies to create these things. And the more that you have, the more options you have as you go to decorate your wreath. One of the things I would like to point out when it comes to decorations is I usually try to create decorations in an odd manner, meaning that there you can have an even number of decorations or an odd number of decorations. I prefer an odd number of decorations. There's a saying that says that, that symmetry, even numbers create symmetry and odd numbers create interest. And in something like this wreath, you really do want interest. So I would go with an odd number of decorations. So for these larger hearts, I have an odd number of decorations that I've created. I always usually create more than I need so that I have some options, but I try to, when using them, stick with odd numbers to try to create that interest in the, in the finished product. Now, the next type of decoration that I'm going to create is, again, based on the same basic concept, but what I'm doing here is I am creating some lines that I'd like to have, some hanging hearts that I'd like to have coming down in the center of my wreath. And I'm using the same technique. This that I have here is basically just some monofilament sewing thread. You could use fishing line if you have it. It's whatever you have. But this is a clear thread that I am going to adhere some hearts um, to have them hang down in the center of the, the wreath. This particular heart is actually already has a couple of layers on it. So what you're seeing me glue here is actually two layers of hearts already. So I've already gone ahead and adhered together several layers. I do want this to have some weight to it because I want it to weigh down the line so that it will hang properly. If it was just a single layer of cardstock, it wouldn't hang properly. There wouldn't be any weight associated with it. So again, both of these layers, the top and the bottom, I've already adhered a couple of layers of cardstock together. And I've done that with these smaller hearts that I'm going to put on as well. And again, as I said before, I'm looking at creating things that are a little bit odd numbered, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hang three, one little heart, a big heart, and then on the bottom, another little heart. And I learned after the first one that if I put the heart underneath monofilament thread before I put the glue down, then it's much easier than trying to put the glue down and then slide it under. And I'm putting a lot of glue in that center where that thread is located. And now I've just gone ahead and I've lined them up exactly the way that I want them. And I'm going to put my stamping tool on top 
to weigh it down a little bit so it can dry. Now, another type of decorations, I didn't really want to have a lot of bows on here, but I did want to have a few things to soften up the wreath. And what I'm doing here is I'm just doing kind of a fluted design on the bow. And I'm sorry, that was a little bit out of frame. Uh, the next one that I do is going to be a little bit more in frame. And I'm just basically doing this accordion style wrapping. I'm going to then trim up the ribbon a little bit and then I put one of the floral pins right down in the center and spread things out and it gives me just a little bit of a bow, a little bit of an accent that I can throw in. Very, very simple, very easy to do. I did decide that I wanted to have the pearl in the center be a little bit more pink in keeping with the theme. I tried one marker and didn't notice that it, it did very much. Uh, one color of a marker and then I went back to sort of that blush pink. I think it's an R34 but I will have that in the description. And it just made it match the theme a little bit better. So now that I have some of my elements I'm going to now go ahead and start to decorate. The flowers that you see here are done in a separate video and I will link to that at the end of this video. So these flowers were created in a separate video. One of them is just made out of flat cardstock. It's just basic cardstock. The other is made using Copic markers. And then this last one that I just put in, that actually was made with distress inks on a textured cardstock. So it was really a fun project to make them in different ways. I added a little bit of a uh, wink of Stella to them. Really fun to create. And now I'm just going in and taking those picks that I created and I'm moving them around a little bit. Everything that I'm using here was created using some of those same techniques, that stacking of cardstock, those pearls. I'm just going in and arranging things. Once I've gotten things arranged to kind of the place that I want them, I'm going to go in and I'm going to clip any of the, the pins that are protruding out the back. Keep in mind that you want to do that a little bit more carefully than I did. I did it a little bit more quickly than I should have, and I ended up scratching myself. So be very careful with that, and I'm just using some, some snips to do that. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me for this seasonal wreath for Valentine's Day. If you enjoyed this project, please hit the like button. If you liked this video and you want to see more from Dory Creative, check out some of our other videos in this series, and please consider subscribing. Thank you. And remember, always be creative.